bear in mind that we cannot say that we know that there was not a prime mover. It can't, it, it's not within our compass, pitifully ignorant as we are, only scrabbling on the lower slopes of the study of physics, as all of us are, even the best. We may not say that we know there was no prime mover. We may not say that. Um, we can say that all the laws appear to operate without that assumption. Uh, it's very, very, very rare indeed to meet a physicist of any standing, from Einstein onwards, who is not at the most a Spinozist. In other words, someone who might say there could be a pantheism somewhere, there could be a force, uh, but there is no, no way you can take a step from the laws of physics, the observable creation of the cosmos, uh, that leads you to the belief that there is an intervening personal God who does answer prayers, who does watch over you, who does notice what you're up to, who does mind what you do, who you sleep with and in what position, uh, what you eat, what you eat and on what days of the week, uh, what propitiations and sacrifices you will make, what commandments you will observe. There is no possible way, no one's even tried it, of getting from the laws of physics or biology to any such idea. So from de uh, the person who says, I'm a deist, I don't think all of this can be an accident, there must be some cosmic force, I say, I can't disprove it, though I think the cosmos functions without it, but you have all your work, sir or ma'am, still ahead of you, before you can say that Jesus of Nazareth was a real person, let alone that he was the son of God, let alone that his mother was a virgin, let alone that he was resurrected. None of these things, by the way, would prove he was the son of God, if they did happen, nor would they prove that his doctrines were not erroneous. A resurrected person who was the son of a virgin could still be talking nonsense. There's no logic that says he must be right. If I'm having an argument with you, sir, and you say, you lose, boy chick, I say, how come? because my mother never went to bed with, a, uh, with another man. Your logic is faulty. I think my, uh, my case could remain just as strong as ever it was. Uh, in default of that, I must say rather bizarre uh, intervention. Now, why do we have religion in the first place? Why are we having this discussion? Why does Frank feel the need to talk in this way? Because we are pattern-seeking mammals. It's part of our evolution. We look for patterns. We're designed to look for them. And if we can't find a good explanation, we'll come up with a bad one, rather than none at all. Uh, most people would rather have a conspiracy theory than no theory. It's very observable that. There's a lot of junk science around before good science arrives. Before we have astronomy, we have astrology. Before we have chemistry, we have alchemy. Um, all of these things are deriv derivatives of religion, because in a very sinister verse of the Bible that used to upset me when I was being forced to listen to it as a, as a little boy, it says, seek and ye shall find. Yes, that's exactly right. Seek and you will find. Seek for an explanation of volcanic eruptions when you're living in a primitive society and you will think they're probably a, vi a, a visitation from an angry deity. And if you're told you can postpone the next eruption by throwing a few live babies into the lava down the crater, that's what you'll do. Religion has just started. Religion has just begun. Uh, why do some people get the plague and others not? Because they're sinful. Why, where's the plague coming from in the first place? It's a punishment from God and or, in early Christian society, the Jews have poisoned the wells. So we'll go and get them, again, because we already hate them because they killed our Redeemer. Uh, they committed deicide, all of them did, all of them, no one's exempt. Indeed, if you, want to be, if you have to be a Christian, it's an article of their faith that we were all present at Calvary. We all drove in the nails, the Jews particularly so. And we all have to expiate this guilt for a crime that may or may not have been committed, but if it was, was committed before we were born. What is this? It's not physics. Okay? It's not biology. It's not science. It's faith. Why don't you fly under your true flag, sir? Why don't you say these things must be believed as articles of faith? Don't try and derive it from science. Now, I've, um, uh, I can't improve on um, the argument that David Hume comes up with, came up with, against the idea of the supernatural, against the idea that, that the laws of nature are occasionally suspended in order to make people's faith a little more secure. Um, Ambrose Bierce in his Devil's Dictionary, you may remember, says uh, under prayer, under P for prayer, uh, prayer. Um, a request that the laws of nature be suspended in favor of the petitioner, himself admittedly unworthy. Uh, David Hume puts it a little more acidly than that. He says, if you see the laws of nature apparently suspended, 
perhaps a virgin's given birth, uh, perhaps a leper has suddenly stopped being a leper, who, who knows what it might be, you know the sort of thing. Um, you have to ask yourself one of two things. Well, actually you have to ask yourself both. Which is the more probable, that the laws of nature have just been suspended or that I am under a misapprehension? That's if you are an eyewitness yourself to the one. If you're hearing about it second, third, fourth, and fifth hand, you have to ask this question with redoubled and trebled and quadrupled force. And the likelihood is which? That the laws of nature were suspended or that somebody may be garbled, maybe a rumor got around. Um, if you make this assumption, then nothing, nothing is mysterious about reality. Nothing is mysterious at all. It, it would explain why everyone seems to die and no one comes back. No longer a mystery about that. It would explain why uh, some people are cured uh, of leprosy and other even worse diseases if they go to the doctor and if that doctor has access to certain kinds of drugs, but not if they don't. Um, the great theologian Lancelot Andrews, the Bishop of, um, Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, during the Black Death wondered. He said, it seems odd to me. Uh, there are people who go to church and pray and they give their tithes and they... Uh, do everything that they're supposed to do, and they lead godly lives, and yet they, they seem to die of the plague just as much as the sinners do. He went to his grave, the, the, uh, the archbishop, not realizing that he'd very nearly stumbled on a very good point.